it is not impossible that one day I'm sailing, I hit something and have to abandon to the life raft. Let's experience together how this would be. Man, how long have we been on the way now? It's been like two weeks, I think. Five more days. I'm excited to see land. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Shoot, what did we hit? No, 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 no. Whoa. What is it? Shoot. There's water coming in. Only got like five minutes. We're going to sink. Get live raft. I'm doing a mayday call. Mayday, mayday, mayday. This is sailing yacht Limonada, 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 Gulf Quebec, Victor, X-Ray, Yankee, MMSI 338 426611. Mayday, sailing yacht Limonada, Gulf Quebec, Victor, X-Ray, Yankee, MMSI 338 426611. Our position is 50 degrees, 15 decimal, 23 minutes north, 001 degrees, 13 decimal, five minutes west. We hit an unknown subject and are sinking fast. We require immediate assistance. We are two people on board. We have an e perp in the water and are abandoning to our life raft. Over. As quick as you can, get it ready. We're going down soon. It's gonna be faster than five minutes. It's coming in. Yeah. I'm gonna get more supplies, put them in the life raft. Just get it ready. We're going down. Stop getting more stuff. Get in, the boat is going down. Dan, hurry! I'm going, I couldn't grab anything else! Oh, give me! Take, oh. take my hand! I got you! Uh, shit! Uh, Ow! <laughs> Down! <laughs> so, in front of us, with this 15 horsepower dinghy, is gonna create waves, so we're gonna actually experience this. My first experience right now is it is wet, the floor is wet, and uh, yeah, it's not very, um, it's a small space. It's a four person live raft. It's still a small space. <laughs> Here we uh, go. Jesus, look how close he is. <laughs> I, want, I want to have a shot of that too. That looks so cool. I feel like the behind the scenes is more yeah. fun to shoot than the actual. <laughs> Dan is adding a bit of dramatic effect to this. Holy! Wow! <laughs> oh, Jesus! Uh. Need more water in here. I'm That's honestly, like. I'm honestly not sure if I prefer. A I might rather prefer my dinghy than in the live raft. He's gonna tow us. Uh, uh, supposedly, live rafts. Uh, should be able to withstand a, a three knot towing. Oh, okay. So having a bag of potable drinking water here, which I mind opening it up. I would actually like to try how it tastes like. One other thing I noticed, we just closed uh, the actual zipper and it's already, it's getting pretty hot in here already. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, with two like, people with this Mylar thing here. And that's within... Which is good, dude. Like, you want to have that problem. So you can always get cooler by jumping in the ocean. Doesn't yeah. matter where you are in the world. It is like, what, two minutes? So I'm curious how it is in 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and do me a favor, if we ever use the knife, it always gets closed and gets put right back into here. Because sliding around with an open knife is not my idea of a way to get cut. Recommended consumption um, per day. It's a it's a fourth of a liter. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> it might be expired. Oh, it's like super expired. Yeah. This actually tastes pretty horrible. Jesus. Oh God, it smells so bad. Oh God, lighting. Uh, just uh, notice, it's not lighting outside. Uh, okay. Yeah, there's the little thing on the very top. So here it is. That's our light. So this is a four-person live raft and I'm actually very curious that we're gonna try to like sleep in here with two people Because uh, Gonna go that way. I like like this is how my feet are currently and uh, Well, this is how my head is so I'm wondering if we were two people and I would sleep diagonal and you would like, give me space to sleep Well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just trying just just be aware, I'm like 
two inches shorter than you. Okay, yeah, so go for it. Basically, that's not possible to lie straight. That's okay. So I guess in order to sleep, you be in the um, child's position. Or like this. But now with two people in a child position, this is a uh, very like four people like sleeping. Like good luck. I mean, with four people in here, you'd be resting on each other, which does have a little bit of comfortability to itself. All right. And the other thing you gotta think is with four people, your your likeliness of having hypothermia goes down so much. So like, right now, we're, we're, in the, we're below the Tropic of Cancer, right? So we're in a warm place. We're not in winter, we're in like, I guess, mid-spring probably. Um, so it should be fairly warm, and it is. But I'm, I'm soaking wet, you're partially wet. We could get this thing fully dry. Um, but I keep spilling water, apparently. Uh, no, that's, that's fair, I do keep spilling water. Um, so yeah, so if you do have four people in here, it's gonna keep you a lot warmer, for sure. And if you have to, you just open this up. You can always open that up and let air in. That's not a problem. Um, and we're, we're having mild seas now, and it's like, right now it's, it's, actually, it's pretty comfortable, actually. I'm comfortable, are you comfortable? Pretty comfy, yeah. I wonder if I pee, would I actually do it like standing here, or I'd probably go in the water, and no, then- I'd, I'd put my knees here and just pee out of it, 100%. Right. I'd demonstrate that. But if you have to do number two, you gotta go, I mean, what do you, or you wanna- You could leave your butt cheeks over, or you could plop in the water and do an aqua dump. But like, you're, you're depending, I mean, especially, let's say like the water isn't warm where you are. You're sticking your butt cheeks out and you're, you're squatting one out. That's it. It's that simple. And then you're going to grab a little bit of seawater to wipe your butt. A little bit ago I said I'd actually maybe rather be in a dinghy than a live raft. But actually I'm coming back from that because I know that we just keep opening and closing this here. And it's actually really cold, even here in the Caribbean, when it's open. And uh, in the dinghy that would actually be an issue. So I, I, even though the bottom of the dinghy is a lot more stable, and if it would be floating, I would definitely have the dinghy and the live raft, but to survive, to keep warm, this is very different, very different than the dinghy. Because I hear a lot of people sometimes say, you know, oh, I'd rather take a dinghy than a live raft, and I've thought about that. And in the dinghy, we would have we would have been cold right now. Yeah, if you just have a blanket, like a mylar blanket, you'd be good though. I definitely, if possible, tie them together, you know? Oh yeah, 100%. Around. When you're, when you're wet, like just a little as breeze gets you cold. So we're just kind of finding, like I think this right here is probably perfect to give us a little bit of airflow in here, but to keep it enough heat. I like how the bottom of this is, uh, it's a mylar to reflect back up um, the heat. Um, and then I did get all the water out, but then I got this thing wet. So we could still get more water out if we wanted. Yeah. It's like we're in the red light district. <laughs> you know, do you feel like you're back home in Amsterdam, like the red light district? No, I'm not from Amsterdam. So we've been a couple hours in the live room. <laughs> He's already delirious. Oh, fuck that Sprite. <laughs> we, we've been for a couple hours in the live room now, and I think you know, this is maybe the moment where we just need to be really honest to each other. Like, you talk a lot. <laughs> Which last oh, with oh, that's you where you're going with in that. the live raft. I think I'd eventually just swim away. <laughs> just, uh, More life raft for me, that's all right. That, that's my plan, that's how I win the life raft. <laughs> no physical confrontation, no verbal confrontation. Just slowly push them out with... <laughs> Unfortunately, our last meal before the boat sank was baked beans. <laughs> this Dutch man's in for it. <laughs> I gotta say, I found my most comfortable position like this with my, my back on the floor. Here there are 14 of these water bags in. They are a quarter of a liter, one sixteenth of a gallon, and that is your ration for a day. That's like nothing. There's a rainwater catchment system here. And also the idea is with a sponge in the morning that you can uh, catch the condensation of the tarp and then put it in a glass and drink that. I want to quickly run through a few things that are in this live raft. One is a knife. A floating knife. A floating knife? Yeah, oh, okay. And fishing gear. A little bit of fishing gear. And well, oh, these are the flares. And the signaling mirror, a little mirror that's actually used to use sunlight to shine on well, a different boat or subject uh, if something is near. 
And one other thing I need to mention, this life raft is far expired, so that's probably why the water tastes so bad. No, 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 no. The, the, well, the life raft is expired, but the water is from a different life raft ah, okay. that was really expired. Okay, yeah, and the uh, water is like 15 years expired, so that's probably why it tastes so horrible. And this shows you the common most weather patterns throughout the year and their strength. This looks important. I really wish we spoke French. I know what this is. This is the common routes that the shipping containers take. Oh, that's useful. One of the things I noticed is that the instruction manual is in French. And my French is not very good. So, you know, when you buy a life raft, when I buy a life raft in the future, it's probably good to know that the instruction manual is in, uh, in a language that I actually understand. Also, there are a lot of pictures in it and there's basic words that they translated into five languages, which can be, it's really nice. I really like that, it's really useful if you're on the VHF, and even though the international VHF language is English, but if somebody replies not in English, there are at least some basic words that you can use to or uh, reply. English. Or bad English. So you can shout to them how many people are on board and stuff that yeah. you're sinking. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's interesting. I'm interested to see how easy or hard it would be to just to see how yeah, easy it would be to row it. Yeah, go ahead and row it. I guess the paddle could be used as a rudder, but actually using it to paddle somewhere is uh, no. There's also a lot of wound protection in a live raft, obviously, because the likeliness of somebody climbing in a live raft who is hurt is big. It's pretty scarce fishing material. It's all, you, it's all you need. Really don't need any more than this. We have plenty of hooks though. This at most looks like a squid. Everything in the ocean eats squid. Everything likes it. There's no sense in casting it. Just letting it out enough. Fish we can catch is most likely gonna be a mahi because they like to just roam the open ocean and they'll be attracted by this, this little structure in the water. But also, too, we'll leave this open at night and hope a flying fish jumps in. Because <coughs> that happens. <coughs> Maybe a squid might jump in as well, but I think that's more coastal. Generally speaking, if you eat a fish that's on the reef, has a big broomy tail like a grouper or a snapper, those fish you don't really want to eat raw because they can pick up parasites because they sleep on the bottom. But a pelagic fish, like a mahi, mahi, dorado, dolphin fish, it's all the same one. A tuna, wahoo, all those, they never rest, they never lay on the bottom. They're always in the open ocean, so they can't get parasites. So they're clean. We just eat it straight, raw, fresh. Something interesting I'm thinking about that I should grab, actually, and I don't, this was actually never my thought, but I should grab uh, my spear gun when the boat goes down. Or an Hawaiian sling. No, actually, if, spear gun like not even a choice my range with the spear gun the power like i could take down a marlin easily and all i would be doing is taking some rope and attaching that to the spear so it's called a breakaway system as soon as i shoot it spear goes into the fish and then the spear disconnects from the spear gun because like when you if you have this like this is great this takes up barely any space you've got it it's out there it's in the water i think that's great but eventually you know especially if you're aware and on it you'll get mahi underneath the uh, the life raft, almost guaranteed after, I mean, swore I just felt a bite. <laughs> um, so yeah, so me being able to, especially all I need is my mask and snorkel. Actually, I don't even need that. The water's gonna be so clear, I can take shots and I mean, they're gonna be so close. Even still, a lot of times they come right out on the surface, so you could be above the water, have it and just take the shot. I mean, my smaller gun would easily fit in here. So that'd be pretty cool. But yeah, I think that if that ever did happen, I would, uh, if my boat ever sank, I need to prioritize going for that. It's one thing to lose a fish, but to lose your way to get fish is terrible. In reality, what you would do is you would take some rope that you'd have extra here from any number of things that are on board this, and you would just tie the rope around this. That would actually be the true anchor. But then in the case of catching a fish, the best thing to do is to have somebody reeling it in while the other person pulls in the, the actual slack. It's good teamwork that way. One more fun tip if you can do it, you can take like a, especially if you have like um, 
guess it could work with a couple of these. Once you're done with them, you fill them full of seawater. And then when you do see mahi around, you squirt it. You want it to be like raindrops on the water because they think that's fish jumping in and out because it looks similar the way like, I don't know how to explain it, but it's a known fisherman's trick. When somebody catches a mahi, they'll put a hose out over the side and that water spraying down, it attracts them because they think there's like a school of fish nearby or something. It doesn't last for long, but if you do that, it gets them that much closer and then, heck, you might even be able to just snag one of them with this instead of do a straight hook. Or if you've got the spear, you could do a spear on them. I want to do a quick talk over about how was your experience like how like I, I actually learned quite a lot about I, a lot of things i didn't know about fishing so thank you for that that will actually help me when this really happens it's like the spear gun is a is a great idea yeah I, I i'm actually i feel like for what i'm known for people would assume that's the first thing i would grab as far as other stuff um truth be told i keep a garmin in reach explorer plus in my um in my ditch bag with an extra battery. So yeah. I could send quite a few messages, um, which I think is pretty cool like, through satellite. So it's like, we actually would have communication out here. I think that's a pretty big one. This thing was ransacked before we actually got it. So I'm not sure what else would have actually been in here. Yeah. I, like we probably would have had an English, you know, survival guide instead, which would have been cool. A proper bailer, some things like that. I noticed some of the damage we did to it was like spreading apart this, uh, this canopy thing here. You're supposed to be able to jump from four and a half meter high into the live raft and it should still be fine. I'm yeah. not sure if we should try that out. I'm not sure if this live raft will handle that. Well, I feel like that's just an easy way to hurt yourself because right. you're not jumping into water from four and a half meters, you're jumping out of something that's like squishy but still solid. Like, yeah. you can easily break a leg. Um, I definitely learned that like, yeah, getting comfy in here is gonna be difficult. Obviously, four people in this thing yeah. for a long period of time would be horrible. I think two people wouldn't be bad at all though. You, know, you, you can certainly make, or even, even me and you, we could definitely make it work. Yeah. Um, it's also quite not easy to keep it dry. No, yeah, it's really hard to keep it. Well, we're not trying too hard though. That's true. I think during the daylight, you know, we, we've got all the water, we had pretty much all the water out today. And if, especially if we left this open, you know, for the sake of if it rains, you can open this and you can collect water inside of here. It, it was a really a fun experience. I'm really yeah. happy we did this. Like, I actually learned a lot and, and um, well, I, I've sort of been- I think everybody should do this. Yeah, no, no, I agree. I, I, you know, I will say there, there is one really big lesson that I learned, which is um, everybody should do Everybody does a man overboard drill on their sailboat, I think. But nobody does a boat going down drill. And that you should. Like, what will you grab if you have 10 seconds? And I would love to hear from you guys. Like, do you have any suggestions? Put it in the comments and maybe we all can learn something from it. Preferably, too, if you guys have suggestions and maybe like a link or something, you know, show us where you found it so we're not just getting, uh, right. you know, opinions. I'd love to get some good facts on this and learn. Mm -hmm.